So good, good afternoon, everyone. I'm happy to be here today in the beautiful hamlet of Brentwood. And um, um, it is a, a wonderful day. Allow me to uh, acknowledge some great elected officials and community leaders of first our assembly, assistant speaker, Phil Ramos, uh, the great district attorney of Suffolk County, uh, Tim Sini, the Suffolk County legislator, Sammy Gonzalez, Suffolk County legislator, Susan Berlin, the Islip town supervisor, Angie Carpenter, the Uplift Our Towns vice president, Herbie Medina. I also want to acknowledge uh, the bureau chief of the Environmental Protection Bureau, Lem Shrolovic, who is also here today. And I also want to recognize uh, my chief of staff, Ibrahim Khan, who was raised here in Brentwood, um, and obviously who cares about Brentwood as well. Um, so far too often we see uh, pollution and other environmental issues plague towns like Brentwood. And these communities are subjected to higher levels of air pollution. They are sometimes forced to drink water that is contaminated. Or in this case, it was this community's park that was the site of illegal and harmful waste dumping waste containing hazardous materials. This is not just an environmental issue, my friends, it's a, a health issue. It's also an issue of injustice, and quite simply an issue of environmental racism. And it puts communities and children and our natural resources in harm's way. From the air that we breathe, to the water that we all enjoy, to the communities that we live in, we must address environmental injustice in all of its forms. And that is why I am so happy today and proud to announce that my office has secured $627,000 for the Brentwood community. Yeah. From eight companies that were responsible for illegally dumping tens of thousands of contaminated waste here in this beautiful park. Roberto Clemente. And our work is far from over. You see, the funds from these agreements will be sub submitted to the court for final approval and will be used to make needed improvements to this park and others in the Brentwood area. And if you need a list of the other parks, we can provide them to you. But the largest site where most of the dumping occurred, occurred right here. Um, and let me reiterate that this is subject to court approval. Um, we will work in partnership with local community groups, elected officials in the town of Islip to engage and have a conversation with community residents to identify their priorities for enhancing the beauty, of, the beauty and the functionality uh, of the parks. As someone who just used their restrooms, I think restrooms is their number one priority. And certainly as someone who just used the restroom, I can relate and understand. It's important that those who were hurt by the loss of the park have a role in deciding how it can be improved. And the funds announced today make up the first settlements that we've reached as part of the federal lawsuit that the Attorney General's office brought in 2017 against 33 construction contractors, waste brokers, and waste haulers that contributed to the dumping. Uh, this first group of agreements uh, includes six construction contractors who arranged for the disposal of the soil and debris that were contaminated with hazardous substances that originated in New York City uh, from in const at construction sites. And the names of those uh, construction contractors are as follows. Atria, Builders, A-T-R-I-A, Atria, Monaco Construction, A-Lift Construction, A-L-E-F Construction, 158 Franklin Avenue, LLC, Triton Construction Company, and Touchstone Homes. Also included are the companies that brokered the removal of the contaminated waste from construction sites, I-E-V Trucking and C-O-D Services. The payments range from uh, $40,000 to $175,000, and the, the payments vary depending upon uh, the uh, relative fault of the individual target. Now, legal actions against the 25 um, other companies and individuals named in the lawsuit are ongoing, 
and any funds obtained towards those actions will also be directed towards the enhancement of the Brentwood area parks. And so we will have additional funds. And we expect these funds to come in the near future. But today we are taking major strides to give community back what they've long been due. And we, um, we, and as we return to some sense of normalcy, and I guess some of you are asking, well, why announce it now? Well, as we return to some sense of normalcy uh, following the pandemic, we thought it fitting um, to announce these settlements today as all of us, again, see the light at the end of the tunnel and as we all come out of um, being in seclusion. We are holding the companies accountable uh, for their role in polluting the park with hazardous materials and we're holding them financially liable for the community's loss of the park during um, the three years it was closed for cleanup. And as many of you know, um, this all started between August 2013 and 2014. Um, August and April 2014 where tens of thousands of tons of soil and debris were transported from construction sites in New York City and illegally dumped right here in the Robert Clemente Park from August 2013 to April 2014. Tens of thousands of hazardous soil and debris. The town of Islip they closed the park in May 2014 when environmental testing revealed that the soil here where the children play contained asbestos and various other toxic chemicals, heavy metals and pesticides, all chemicals and substances that are incredibly um, dangerous to children, to communities and to uh, the natural resources. And the park remained closed until June 2017 as Cleanup contractors removed uh, around 39,000 tons of hazardous construction waste. And in May 27th, the Attorney General's office, uh, my predecessor, he sued the contractors who arranged for the disposal of the contaminated soil and debris, along with companies that brokered the removal and disposal of the contaminated waste and the haulers that transported waste to this park and dumped it here. And I know that you might be asking, well, why did it take four years? Well, um, under the leadership of my leadership uh, as the Attorney General of the State of New York, it took us uh, four years because there were 33 respondents, defendants involved. And because of a case of this size, because of the litigation of this magnitude um, involving so many respondents, it was very complicated and time consuming. But most importantly, uh, we wanted to ensure and maximize the amount of the settlements going to the community. And we were able to identify the companies um, in, by analyzing the GPS data from the trucks that the district attorney's office obtained. Now, as you know, the district attorney's office also engaged in a criminal prosecution of some of these respondents. And there is um, uh, some overlap, some overlap, um, but we use their data and the data clearly showed that these trucks going in and out of this neighborhood and, there, and that is why we were able to identify the companies. There is no excuse for the actions of these companies because of their negligence and their greed and their insensitivity. New Yorkers in and around Brentwood lost out on the recreational and, so, and social centerpiece of their community. And children need a safe place to play. Families uh, need a clean place to gather. Seniors need a place to walk. And natural resources were degraded unnecessarily and unjustly. Um, and simply, New Yorkers deserve access to safe, open spaces to enjoy all that their communities have to offer. As we continue with these actions and other initiatives aimed at advancing environmental justice throughout the state, I'm committed to ensuring that the communities most vulnerable uh, to this harm and who have historically bo borne its disproportionate burden of pollution are not left behind. Before I turn it over to our first speaker, I want to take a moment to recognize the hardworking members of the team who have been relentless in holding these companies accountable and protecting uh, this community. Assistant Attorney General Matthew Sinkman and Channing Wister Jones, Chief Environmental Scientist Anthony DeVarkis and Jody Feld, Environmental Scientist John Davis, and Geographic Information System intern Gregory Welter, all under the supervision of Deputy Chief of the Environmental Protection Bureau, 
Monica Wagner, which is led by Bureau Chief Lem Shrolovich. Monica and Lem, are you here? Come on, Monica. Come on, Lem. Give him a round of applause. Thank you so much. And now, ladies and gentlemen, um, our first speaker is the Assistant Assembly Assistant Speaker, Assembly Member Phil Ramos. Thank you so much. Uh, I would like to thank our Attorney General, uh, James, for coming out to Brentwood on this historic day. And it is a historic day because it's one of the rare occasions where a community of color who's been aggrieved by racial racism has found justice in its elected officials who have come out here, uh, spent their time to investigate what happened, and bring those responsible uh, to some accountability. And that is a result of the leadership of our Attorney General, uh, Tish James, who is, this is not the first time she's come here. She was actually in the midst of the pandemic out in our community giving out hundreds of thousands of eggs that they had acquired to our community. And, and you know, that's also a rare occasion because Brentwood is a community where we rarely see uh, statewide elected officials coming here, spending their time, investing funds. And now we're seeing a new day thanks to your leadership. And we want to thank you for that. For years, the local residents of this community were robbed of a safe space for their children to play in the outdoors, all because of the abhorrent actions of companies who gave no thought to putting profits before the health of the Brentwood families and by dumping tons of hazardous chemicals into our community park. Without regard to the lives of the people in this park, without regards to the children who for months played on top of this toxic fill. And that is a result, and that resulted in environmental racism here that Caught, got, didn't get ca caught on the radar and went on for a long time. On behalf of the ISIP community, I want to again thank the Attorney General for confronting the environmental racism and securing the set settlement from companies who polluted our beloved community in my assembly district. This money will help improve and restore Clemente Park and help ensure that Brentwood families have a safe green space to enjoy. You know, as one of the first elected officials who noticed the dirty fill over here and reported it to the town and set in motion all these uh, investigations that ended up uh, with us here today, um, you know, I, I felt that there was a need for everybody to get together and find some way to find a solution. Yes, we stood up and we spoke out against the injustice. Everybody who's responsible, everybody who should have been accountable, we did that. But we had to do more than just rhetoric. We had to find some solution. We had to find some way to give back and bring back something to the community of Brentwood. We're talking about restorative justice. As a result, I was able to secure $2 million in state funds to build a state-of-the-art uh, spray park in, in this community and also for uh, the skate park that's, uh, that's coming soon. That spray park is almost completed when you get done here. I hope you take a walk to the other side and you can take a look at it. Um, that was in 2000 and the, it, uh, 17 and 18 budgets. And we continue to work across the aisle. I worked with our town supervisor, who in all fairness was not here at the time that this happened, but worked across the aisle to try and uh, make this happen. This is a town park, and I invested money in the town to, to uh, help the park in a bipartisan effort, because there is no democratic way to fix a pool. There's no uh, Republican way to build a spray park. You just have to roll up your sleeves and do it. And that is why I'm looking forward to this, these funds, more than $600,000, to come here, bring more restorative justice, and be used for the community that was aggrieved. Some years ago, the LIPA company, there's a power plant on the Pilgrim Grounds, spewed sulfur into the community for 10 months without us knowing. Uh, I'm sorry, it was NIPA, and NIPA was fined a million dollars. That million dollars went to build a spray park, uh, um, bicycle path over in uh, Queens. We don't want that to happen. We want these funds to be spent in this community. I will continue to work with my community partners and fellow elected uh, leaders to ensure that any person or business who is e illegally dumps and contaminates waste is held accountable for this action. We are still waiting on the results of lawsuits against the remaining companies involved to bring justice to our community that has been exploited for far too long. I look forward to working with local and state officials to restore the park facilities as well as hearing from residents as to what they want to see in their neighborhoods and responding as elected officials should, not just with words, but with resources, actions, and restorative justice. God bless you all. Thank you very much. 
Assemblymember Ramos, I look forward to seeing you at the skate park. <laughs> Our next speaker is the great District Attorney of Suffolk County, District Attorney Tim Sini. Thank you so much. Let's be honest. For far too long, companies and other bad actors thought they could dump contaminated material and other waste in our neighborhoods. But not any longer. Not under General James's watch, not under my watch. And that's why I want to thank Attorney General James for her leadership on this issue. It's been an honor and a privilege to work with her office to hold these defendants civilly liable. That's also why my office has brought the largest ever illegal dumping criminal case in New York State history. We convened a special grand jury to make recommendations and the state legislature and the governor acted and made illegal dumping a felony. We're going to continue to work with all of the stakeholders at the local, state, and federal level, and particularly at the community level to end illegal dumping in Suffolk County. I want to thank the Attorney General for her leadership on this issue. And our next speaker is Suffolk County Legislator, Le Legislator Sammy Gonzalez. Thank you very much uh, for inviting me here today. Um, I am so proud to represent this community. But I remember like yesterday, when the dumping was being done here at Roberto Clemente. Those houses that you see behind you and to your right, I live right there. My grandchildren played here. My children played basketball. And so when this occurred, it was very hard to believe it. Very, very difficult. Um, we do still do not know the results of these children that were playing here, or even the adults that were playing here, but more the children. More the children because we will not find out if they have been affected for some years still. And so that still troubles me because, again, my grandchildren played all along here. But here we are today. Fast forward. Thank you. Thank you. Attorney General Tish James. Thank you. Mr. Sini, thank you so much for what you've done and the laws that they are instituting today, even at the state level. Because now they will hold accountable those individuals that put our children in harm's way. And we can't ever forget that. I also looking at the, the beauty of this park, the water park, our pools, and every day, the repairs that are going on here, and my morning walks here every single morning reflect what the town of Islip has been doing here, the beautiful work, uh, so that we can continue to enjoy this park. This money that is coming here is of the importance. It continues to pour here so that we can provide for our kids. I keep saying our children because my grandkids are my world. And so thank you once again for bringing these funds here to today. And, and thank you again. And I cannot wait to continue working and assisting in any way that I can. Thank you for the opportunity. I also want to say thank you to our, our um, Commissioner of Parks, who does some phenomenal work here at the Roberto Clemente Park. Thank you. I pray the health of your children and your grandchildren and all the children of Islip and New York State and all across this country. Our next speaker is the Suffolk County Legislator, Ms. Susan Berlin. Hi everyone. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank all of you for being here to recognize the importance of this, of this day and the importance of taking care of this park. 
uh, you know, as a, a former assistant AG, like a hundred years ago, <laughs> I uh, I really want to thank our, our Attorney General for taking the lead in this, and she has proved to just be a force to be reckoned with, and and, and a woman that we should all, you know, follow her example. And uh, I really appreciate everything that you've done for our state, but especially, you know, for this community. You, you heard Legislator Gonzalez; he lives that way. My district is literally right that way. So when I was walking and talking to, you know, the neighbors of the park when they couldn't use it, you know, it was uh, it was a really sad time, you know, because their their children couldn't go here anymore. And as Legislator Gonzalez said, they were concerned about the effects that uh, the long-term effects of their children playing there before anybody knew. So it's really important that all of us together at all levels of government, you know, state and local, you know, and the town, that we are going to work together to, uh, to make sure, first and foremost, that nothing like this ever happens again, and that, you know, we uh, have a, a beautiful park that's safe for our residents. So I look forward to working with the residents because to me that's the key point. What do the residents of this neighborhood want done with that money? What do they want with their parks? What things, you know, are they are they looking for? And that's, you know, that's where we all sit down at a table together. We all discuss what the uh, the best thing is for the community to restore and enhance not only you know Roberto Clemente Park but other the other Brentwood parks as well. So residents of Brentwood. You deserve to have clean and safe parks to enjoy with your families, and it's up to the elected officials, it's up to us to, to ensure our parks are open and safe. And as you can see, that's what we're absolutely going to do. So I support the ongoing efforts. I look forward to working with the communities. And again, thank you all for being here. And now the amazing supervisor of Islip Town, Miss Angie Gar uh, Carpenter. I don't know about amazing, but we do have an amazing uh, Attorney General, and we're delighted that she's here. And on behalf of the entire Islip Town Board, and uh, Councilman John Cochran is here with me this morning, and all our residents, I really applaud Attorney General Letitia James for her unwavering commitment to hold these companies accountable and for assuring that restitution is made. Although the illegal dumping happened before her tenure, before my tenure, she has been steadfast in her pledge to make the community whole. The dumping that occurred here was not only a violation of the residents of Brentwood, but it was a violation of all the residents of the town of Islip. You know, some of you were here, and I, and I see Marianne Pfeiffer from Yes, the youth organization, and Manny Troach from the fire department, the community came together, our Commissioner of Public Safety uh, and our Commissioner of Parks. This community came together. Phil Ramos was here. It was an incredible, incredible day when we were able to give this park back to the community with a brand new Olympic-sized swimming pool. And because of the efforts and dedication of Assemblyman Ramos, he gave us the funding that we needed to get the project of the spray park off the ground and completed. And now you see a brand new playground over there. And we're going to have a skate park completed. That is in the planning stages right now. The engineers are doing what they need to do so that we can start construction. It is a coming together. That was a coming together of this community. And that's what I see here this morning. And that's what I'm hoping as a supervisor of this incredible great town of Islip, that all of our residents, all of our hamlets come together because what happens to one of us happens to all of us. What they do to one of us affects all of us. And it's up to us to do what's right for our community. So again, I wanna thank uh, the Attorney General uh, for helping continue to give this park back to our wonderful community. Thank you. Thank you so much. And finally, um, please join me in welcoming Uplift Our Town's Vice President, Herbie Medina. Yeah, Herbie. Good afternoon, everybody. It's great to be here with everybody um, this afternoon. Uh, my name is Herbie Medina. I'm uh, Vice President of Uplift Our Towns and co-founder. Uh, just a little background, I think it was 2016 where um, I had my two daughters post up a sign saying we want our park back in the front over there in Broadway and 
you know, it's it's nice to see that the work that's being done with, um, you know, everybody together. This is, you know, uh, an effort, a collective effort upon everybody, you know. So I'm excited to see, you know, the work going forward and what it's going to look like later on when, when the end result is here. Um, first, I want to... I want to thank the Attorney General uh, for inviting us to this press conference to represent the community. Uh, five years ago, we, we gathered, and this is, uh, we gathered at the entrance of this park's closed gates with friends, family, and na neighbors as frustrated community members and an upset father having to explain to his children why they didn't have a nice park to play in. It feels good to be making this announcement at the place where our organization first started. Uplifts Uplift was created by our community members coming together to demand our voices be heard regarding the reopening of Roberto Clemente Park. Fast forward to today, after countless hours of advocating for a better park and overall community, we're excited to be able to lead the future plans to enhance our park. The town has done a great job with the pools and the addition of the Splash Park, and we're looking forward to the addition of the skate park soon. We look forward to engaging our fellow community members as we come together to come up with a plan that will benefit our residents and bring welcome enhancements to our community park. Thank you. You know, what's so great about being the Attorney General is I have the ability to be creative in our settlements. As was mentioned, um, we had a settlement against an egg manufacturer that was engaging in price gouging during the pandemic. We use those settlement funds to provide eggs to homeless shelters and to individuals who are struggling during this pandemic. And now we have the honor and privilege of presenting this very big fat check of $627,000 to the community and government leaders here today. Um, and let's all take a picture. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.